Alright, it is party time. Good evening, heroes and heroines, and welcome to Practicing Programming in C. Uh, Zilla Resco is um, hyped, I believe. <laughs> so, um, let's, let's get a Firefox open, and I can show you what we've done yesterday. Okay, so yesterday we introduced this notion here. Uh, it's basically like styled, uh, styled categories. So these things, these things with the actual kind of white background with the little grid, they represent blackboard sessions. So whenever, whenever the, the stream, well, whenever Mio is uh, doing like a blackboard session uh, his uh, annotations will be styled in this in this manner uh, and in a sec yeah there you go so there, there he's in the he's in the blackboard area there uh, and I think yesterday that was mostly all we did we had to fix a bug as well which was just it was to do with um, it was to do with the references so the um, the thing was, uh, when a um, when a stream didn't have any references, it was um, it was completely broken, because I was I had too many closing divs or so put closing divs in the wrong place, and it just messed up the entire thing. Uh, so that was a bug that I needed to fix. There might have been there might have been another bug as well actually, but I can't quite remember what that was. Um, but then the the bulk of the stream was then spent doing this stuff here. The uh, the start of the category styling. And I'd like to continue with that today. Um, there's a another kind of a style that's basically exactly the same as the blackboard, which is the run style. Or the so I I mark up things as like being in the run category. And that's basically when people are when they run their program basically. So like when they run Hammered Hero, when they run OBBG. Uh, those those uh, annotations will have a different style as well uh, and I'm thinking they will look kind of they kind of mirror the look of the of the game that they that they're that they're running uh, and and also like over time maybe that style will kind of change to reflect the change uh, in the actual program I don't know I mean it, it might even just maybe just mimic the logo well no, it'd be probably cool to make it look like the, like the actual game itself. Um, but that will be exactly the same as the blackboard, so it wouldn't be very interesting. Uh, I'd like to do something a little bit different, uh, which is the um, it's annotations that are written in the chat, basically. So if I can, f well, I don't think there are any in this episode. A few ways on the sponge mode, just down there. Um, yeah, let's just have a little look. So into what spot I've gone live. Um, I was in my Euler directory. Yeah, because uh, earlier Captain Craft was streaming some Project Euler stuff. Which is kind of kind of cool. Uh, it's been quite a, quite a fantastic day for streaming. Actually, we've had Captain Craft doing some dwarf um, dwarf re research, basically. Uh, I think was he implementing anything? I think maybe he was just just researching uh, the dwarf format uh, for doing debug stuff on Linux um, for his debugger Lisa, and then after that he was doing some Project Euler. Uh, and then, like just before I start streaming, Alan, ha, <laughs> do a backflip. I will. I'll do it. I'll do it in um, in a few minutes. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll do it after I've uh, implemented the stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Then we had Alan doing uh, some four coder stuff. 
And he was also, he was like, um, he didn't program anything, he was like seeking, uh, seeking guidance really from the chat as to how to go about doing various things like doing a terminal based interface for Forkader, which would be, it's it's really high on my, on my wish list really. Because like, I'm in the terminal here and I kind of like being able to just kind of have have it in the terminal. Um, partly for like window management reasons, but that could be that could be solved by i3. But also like when you're SSHing across you know between different devices, um, you can just run SSH SSH into the other device. And then you can run your program, and if it's a terminal program, it's just exactly the same, more or less. I mean, as long as you've set, set up the environment the same, it's going to be the same. Um, uh, and I mean, I suppose for Forcode, actually, it wouldn't make any difference to responsiveness because Forcode is already really responsive. Um, but my terminal, you know, one of the things I like about the terminal is that it is really responsive. Like programs just happen to be uh, really quick to use. Anyway, uh, let's let's see. Whiskey. So I'm looking for an instance of an at symbol, basically. So there's an at. Uh, I don't think I said anything. So the rest of the response of two, yeah. I mean, it makes such a difference, doesn't it? When um, ah, there's no, there's no more whiskers. It makes such a difference when you can just kind of rely on stuff, um, not being laggy, basically. Ah, there we go. So curry soup underscore t. So an obbg zero zero one underscore one. Right, so if I just build that, HMOT YouTube, OVG, 001, and there's a file of terminals too. So if I look at this, so it's probably going to be the what key, what keyboard is that, isn't it? Sounds blue. Right, so that is, what's happening? Oh, it's the arrow. <laughs> it's like, what's Sean wearing there? Um, yeah, so if I just have a look at that. So that's by Curry Soup. So because of Interfaz's fantastic parser, it's actually just automatically given me the text, which is that. Right, what keyboard is that? Sounds blue. And he's also whacked this bit into a, uh, into a struct. So I just need to grab that out, basically, and uh, put it in in whatever style I want. So actually, before I before I do that, I think I should should I mock it up? I mean, actually, I don't think I need to mock anything up because I think it should be pretty um, straightforward. So I won't bother. I'll just um, I'll just code it and then we'll see what it looks like. The game First Assault. It's a free FPS game based on Ghost in the Shell. Okay, right. I've got that on my um, on my to watch list still. Its menus are horrible. When you first hover over a button or clickable, it lags about. Oh, oh gosh. Shed one to. Oh, dude. Tell you what. Talking about shedding tears over games. Um, I shed a few tears over Undertale. Lazily implemented lazy loading. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Let's get on some music. So yeah, we're heading into the surgery, folks. Take a number.
stuff off. I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna uh, like full screen this so I'm not uh, I'm not ignoring you, I just need to kind of see a bit a bit more of what I'm doing here. Working location. Refs. Right, so this is the refs up there. Uh, and then here we go, we've got the this is the end of the title, markers container, and then this is the start of the markers, right. So for each annotation, we want to start it off with a marker, an opening marker. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is the categories. And this is the timestamp and the data ref down here. And then it flushes the it flushes that stuff out to there. And then it says here we go, it says for each reference. Yeah. Oh hang on a minute, if if it, if there's a reference count, right. Right, okay. So here we have a claimed buffer for the text. And it's the text that I will want to be dealing with. So I do, uh, I do want to be inserting stuff into the text kind of location. Got the ink. So I think up here, I want to do my check for the um, is uh, has author or whatever whatever the thing is, and then I can start to populate the. I can start, yeah, I can start to populate the text buffer with that, making sure to increment the text pointer so that that can then start to contain the reference stuff if it needs to. Right. I think that sounds like what I want to do. So we've got the claim buffer up there. I'm going to whack, I'm going to nick the ink. Oops. I'm going to pull that. Uh, yeah, so that, like when I do come down to here, ink will just start to set exactly to the value of that. Right. Okay. So we claim the buffer of text. Yeah, right. So this is going to be similarly, it's going to be another sort of um, if this, do all of this stuff and then fall through to. Um, to the next part of the thing, it's not going to be like an if else. And also handily, um, in this stuff I only need to consider the author at the start. Oh, hang on a second. No, actually, I need to actually um, Well, hang on. Yeah, this is black, blackboard. Yeah, right. I might need to do some stuff up here, actually. Like... For marker index. So, if, the, if there's a marker count, do that. But I think I will want to style. I will want to style the um, this thing differently. Right. Um. Yeah, like authored. Just give it a class authored. I do want to do that, I think. So let's um, let's do my check first of all up here, and then also because like the text just happens down here in pointer. 
Endpoint is equal to text. Okay. Yeah, which is nothing to do with this text buffer. So yeah, I suppose actually. to the working location. Yeah, okay. Let's do all of the authored stuff up here. Right. So we're saying if HTML annotations, annotation index and I think it's um, is authored, has author maybe actually. Well, is is quote ah right. <laughs> Let's just look at the um, header. Right, it's more ah uh, right, it's more quote. So author is quote. So that isn't. Well, I'm gonna admit it. Uh, so it's quotes. Interesting. Back account. Author. Yeah, right. So author is a string. Yeah, so I think it's if if the, if there's an author. If the author is non-null, I think. Right. If there's an author, then I want to say, I want to sprint f authored, right? First of all. And that's going to be a class that I will I'll make in the CSS. And then I want to start to put into the text node the actual author. So that means I want to do in pointer oh sorry, um ink is equal to sprintf. And we're sprintfing into the uh, text pointer. Spent over into the text pointer. Um, so yeah, right. So authored means we're talking about the the actual message. So the message is authored. But when we're talking about this class here, this is actually the actual author, <laughs> if that makes sense. So span class author, and it's going to be a string which is the... Oh! Right, yeah, there's also a cool, hit, cool thing here as well. And I'm going to do this in line. Right. Right. Trust me on this one. This is quite exciting actually, because this is the first time I've been able to, well, that I'll be able to use this. I don't know if you can see what's coming, but <laughs> we'll get there. Right, span class author style equals color. I think that's how you do that. And then we need to close the span. Right. And then let me just see what happens the next time I use the 
text pointer. So the text point is going to be equal to the value of the in pointer plus plus. I think previously, so in pointer is the text, so yeah, right. So that's expecting there to be, we're expecting to start exactly the, the location, so there's no, there's no space. So that means that we need to put the space at the end ourselves. Right. So then these things here are going to be, well, actually, we're already there. The first one is this thing. And here I am actually going to do the old, um, the blue Peter. Here's what I did. Here's what I prepared earlier. <laughs> right. It's these little, these little bastards here. Right. Uh, why did that not pull everything in, everything through? Oh, it's the space, the uh, new line there. Damn. Okay, fine. <laughs> See, this is why we need four coders. We need four coders to be able to say, uh, yank two functions. And then it'll do it for us. We need, we need you, Alan. We need you. So this is basically going to hash the string into a colour. The function I need to call is string to colour hash on the string. And since I've kind of done that kind of quickly, I will like, once we've, once we've had a look at this, I'll actually go through what this, this guy's doing. Assuming it works at all, that is. <laughs> so yeah. String to colour hash on the. It's just this guy, isn't it? It's it's this. And then it's going to be, it's going to be that guy again. For that. Right. So that looks kind of okay to me. So sprint f that, and then whenever I sprint f, I always need to. No, I don't. At this point, I need to increment the ink, the inc increment the pointer. Right. Because this is different. Because this is the thing that I need to keep building up. I can't flush this out just yet. Because there's um, there's this stuff to come first. So basically what's happened here is we've sprint effed authored into the working location. So that means that it's it's put it into here after marker. It said that it's authored. Uh, and then the next thing that happens with working location is here. It would potentially set blackboard. And it could set more categories as well if it needs to. Uh, and only at that point, um, well actually after doing blackboard it then sets the data timestamp and then only then it copies it out to the out. Interestingly uh, indented. So let's build that. We need you, Alan. Check if author is null. Hang on a minute. Um, gosh, blimey, I'm missing all sorts. Because <laughs> uh, he's got a real question, just in case you're doing all my work. Yeah. Uh, oh, we have got roll in here as well. Have we? We have got roll. Oh, HMD bot is in here, <laughs> right. Uh, Yeah, 
So the rescue doesn't Mobius. Yeah, why did that not say... Oh no, he can't... She can't... Did, does she say that? No dice. That should say... Do you think I have any Mobius strips lying around? Catch Alter, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so, check if Alter is null. Um... Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, let me just check down the um, Twitch chat as well. I believe there's activity going on. Oh, it's still let's go. Okay. So we're all okay. There we go. Does, uh, does Intobot do the Mobius strips? He must, he must, not he? So yeah, right. So if if author, so Intervals is saying check check if author is null. <laughs> the random just for Mobius. Okay, cool. Uh, right, yeah. So if author is null, so uh. If it's null, you want to do the author null? Ah, oh, right. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Right. So let's try this again. Oh, we die. Awesome. Text pointer plus equals to ink. Oh, it's the right thing to do. Oh, need to increment the actual pointer. Don't I? Yeah, text. Oh, no, I don't. No, sorry. Ignore that. What doesn't it like? HTML to HTML on line two six nine. Ah, I think a color hash function might be returning a pointer to a local string. Ah. <laughs> right. Let's have a look. Is that two six nine? You were saying? Yeah. So that's this line here. So that re that's returning. Um, yeah, let's let's look at this closer now. So basically, I was calling string to call a hash. So you pass it a string. The result starts off as zero. Int i is Do that. In i is equal to that. So, while well, string is not null. Um. So yeah, is it null terminated? They are null. Yeah, they are null terminated, aren't they? So it's going to go in here. It's going to set result. It's going to plus equal. Um, car to color. On the, on that character. And car to color goes up and does this. Oh, I see. Right, I need to pass the um, address. Sorry, yeah, I need to pass the address of this guy. That's what I need to do. Don't I? Uh, what? What? Uh, hang on. Oh, that was why. <laughs> right. Fine. So, right. Maybe I need to make that actually take the point to the string. Then, maybe. Could 
that be correct? No, hang on a minute. That can't be correct, can it? String to clash. Why does that return a an int? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, sorry, it's it's a, it's the wrong thing. That's how you do this, right? Sorry, I'm not explaining any of this, but basically, I need to um, I need to pass it like that. Yeah, yeah. And so far, I've got it. I want to use that exactly. Now let's see what happens. There we have it. So we have some nicely, some nicely styled names in there. I think that, that looks quite sexy. I don't know about you folks. Was that was that a question for me? No. Elephant. Less bites. So there you go. Next stop. Bit of a shame that I forgot how to actually um, use the right value there. Drive. Now for the questions, just to continue, because no one reads the stuff under the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Drive's approach to like sort of. Um, I don't know. I want to say I want to say the word propriety, like <laughs> properly looking at the um, looking at the web page and like reading the stuff. <laughs> oh, there's curry suits. Does Casey drink all milk, milk at work? Question. So yeah, right. So the the other part of the puzzle here was uh, creating the style. It's about what colour he is. Yeah, I didn't see you in, in this list. Um Let's let's grab for you. I just do that? Wow. In a HTML HTML file. So yeah, you asked a question on OBG forty two. I think the OBG forty two was one of the um, one of the test ones as well. So Interbot's purple. There's as far as green. There you go. Well, he's just doing that alone just to write the extra lines. So yeah, unfortunately this person here, Pale Blue Zebra, isn't very legible. And I'm not exactly 100% sure what I want to do, do about that. Uh, another thing I might want to do is also, is whenever somebody is mentioned, their name gets coloured. So like here, when no Rad 91 mentions Ginger Bill, Ginger Bill's name would be coloured. I suppose also it's worth mentioning here that um, my kind of colour hash is a fallback. I'd like I'd like it to be a, fa a fallback. Um, so like the first. The first thing it would do, actually, would be to look into um, look into the Handmade Networks uh, member database and see if there's a corresponding colour. Because, like, um, you know, if I go to my Handmade Network page, um, can I do this? I should be able to do it, shouldn't I? So if I just log in, I believe I'm called Meblo. And then if I 
What about this? Social admin network. Don't know if that was correct, it was correct. Right, so if I go to my settings. So theme is use dark theme. I think it's in the profile page options. Yeah, right. So I've got primary colour and secondary colour. So basically, um, I'd like the first thing to do to be to look at this primary colour and use that. I mean, one thing that could be handy, I can't remember if I've mentioned this or if I've made it as a as a as a like a feature request or an issue or whatever. But one thing that could be handy is having two sets of two sets of colours. A light, uh, a primary color for use on light backgrounds. Uh, primary and secondary for use on light, and primary and secondary for use on dark. And then, like when we've got different versions of things, people's names and stuff could look kind of sane. You know. Oh, there's Zilaresco. Click and hold and drag. Zilaresco, another one. What what colour is Zilaresco in in our chat? Zilaresco's green. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the the uh, the actual hash is just a um, it's just a sum basically. Uh, so yeah. Basically, all it does is it converts these guys to a number between 0 and 25. Doesn't it? Yeah, it takes them down to... Uh, so this is about ordering a pizza. Oh, nice one. <laughs> yeah. What flavour pizza? So yeah, this normalises it down to 0 to 25. Multiplies that by this to um, so basically we're mapping z we're mapping a to z to the range zero to um, this number here, which is the highest number you can represent in in uh, a hex color. So the rest of you participate in the community. You do indeed participate in the community. You do. And then it's just the same with uh, capital to z. So basically, it's sort of um, case insensitive, and then it does uh, the same for zero to nine. It maps those numbers, and then otherwise, if it, if it's just a symbol or something, it just returns grey, basically. Garlic crust, pepperoni with feta cheese. Love that salt flavour of the feta. Yeah, I like feta as well. I think you also get, like when you get the garlic crust, you also get like quite a salty, a salty thing in that, don't you, as well? I've got to be honest, I'm not a, I'm not a consumer of pepperoni. I used to be, but uh, haven't been for a few years. Uh, yeah, and then this thing here, it just, it just adds them all up and then gets the average of them. So that's basically all it does. That's how that little colour hash works. But yeah, as I was going to say, the other part of the puzzle was the authored class, wasn't it? Here. Right. So a lot of people get rid of red meat. Does it? <laughs> authored. Just have a look for that. So what we're talking about is the diff class marker authored. There's our colour. Calibian. What colour is Calibian? Can I see Calibian? There's Calibian. Oh, Calibian's just grey. Wow, okay. That's interesting. 
Who was that down there? Happy little rat. That's quite a quite a greyish colour as well. So grey green, I think maybe. Uh, yeah. For the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was it? It was markers or marker authored. So it's going to be the same thing as the way that I've done the blackboard. So the mark, so the blackboard is basically marker dot blackboard, right? So if I then go down to here and I say marker dot authored, I think that should be it, shouldn't it? And basically, it's like text. Um, yeah, it is text style, isn't it? Or font style. Yeah, font style. Oblique. Usually, Zilla Rescue is red or orange on Twitch. Blue under colors. Uh, I'm not actually, no, I'm actually computing. Um, I'm computing colors from the, from the name. So it's actually like hashing the it's using the name in order to actually produce the colour. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's just these little guys here, um, and it's just a kind of a sum, summation, so a sum and average thing. I was kind of hoping to end up with uh, similar colours to the to the IRC. It's rather similar to Twitch by pure luck. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the luck is with the luck is with you, Insiparos. I think you are our lucky charm. Uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping to be the same as the Twitch. Uh, sorry, the uh, IRC colours. Uh, only because um, in the settings you can like pick your colour hash basically so the oh it's a hash algo is sharp oh, okay uh, oh no yeah you see so the nickel hash is sum right so I've just set it to sum I could use uh, djb2 and when I was actually looking up information about hashing colours, because I thought I'd have a quick look to just, just to see what other people kind of did, I did see DJB2 as an algorithm that people use to do hashing of strings into colours, basically. Um, but I decided against it because I, I thought hopefully the, the sum would give me the same thing as the IRC but I don't know it must be it must be different I suppose as well as summing I'm doing the averaging but I just don't know how how else you could do the actual mapping like with just a sum you know because it kind of Yeah, it's like, because these, these values here, like an A is, let's see, uh, so an A, uh, an A has this value, I think it's 97, isn't it, or is it 61, what's decimal, yeah, so in decimal it's 97, in hash it's 141, isn't it? I think that's right. Oh no, in hash, in hex, it's um, 61. So, yeah, I just don't know, like, if if you were to add up all these numbers, it, you know, if it's just a sum, you could end up in a situation where you hash, like, a great big, huge, long number, or a huge, long string, and you blow out of the... Uh, the total values that you can actually store. Um, 
or if you don't do that and you find that like people's nicknames for example or whatever the strings are if you find that they're all kind of similar similar length and kind of similar characters it's just going to all, all tend towards like the small numbers you know so this is going to mostly end up as zeros and then these guys would just be filled with whatever <laughs> so i don't i don't exactly know what the sum al sum algorithm would would actually do um which at sum just total plus equals to uh in string i and then it is and this is a palette so I, ah right it also does a mod on the palette length to the index valid ah interesting right Total plus equals to that. Oh, so okay, interesting. I suppose it's indexing in the palette that I wasn't um, factoring in. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, as I say, this is uh, this is supposed to be kind of a fallback. Um, yeah, I will actually just say, for the author, ah, hang on a second, oh, you know, I can, I can do that, can't I, um, for the actual author text, and I better just double check exactly where that is, the colour is in here, so the span class author, so yeah, this is going to be uh, an author class that's within the content so marker author, marker authored, content, and then author. Oh no. Uh, oh yeah, that is right actually. Yeah, because content is in div, which stays open, and then author, content author. Um, text style, font style. Really. Is it just normal? Is that, is that how you do it? So yeah, then these guys are just upright. I quite like that. Look how um, <laughs> look how the pipes are just not at all bothered by the italicness of it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, that's not what I want, is it? Yeah, why mark authored? Do I have to do this, I wonder? Yes, I think I do, don't I? Uh, and now I've, I've lost the... Um, God oh, damn it, I've lost that again. Hang on a minute. But, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? Marker authored. So it's got to be something that has marker and authored. Why was everything getting... Oblique. Oh, it wasn't. Delete stale code. Sorry, what was I? What was I seeing then? I'm sure, I saw something down here. Oh, maybe I was just seeing. Was you been playing? Yes, right. Here we go. Introduce logistics. Copy and render. So these guys shouldn't be in italics. So yeah, there's something. There's something buggy here, isn't there? So it's still okay here. Introduce that. Make logistics do that. Comment loop. Look for bottle. Return with pseudo lunch. 
uh, and then here it's after Ginger Bill. Ah, interesting, it's after got the reference, isn't it? So we've got an authored and reference. Um, and then we had soup after it. Maybe it's like this. Yeah, right. The content author. No, no rad. So we've got the span, close span. Ginger bell, that's the text. Right. What's happening up here? That doesn't look right. Three five five two four. They did it. They did with padding. Uh, have I? Have I not done a um, no termination properly? Ginger Bill squared. <laughs> Yeah. Something busted here. So this all seems fine up up there. It's actually this that seems to be going wrong. I think, isn't it? Author, 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 span, content, time code, div class, because I think this shouldn't, this shouldn't be printing out a fourth time. So I think there's a null termination problem again. But why would it only, why would that only be exhibited down there. Coral X. Did progress fade is on its own? That's on its own. Then we got content. We got the deprogress main. We got the content time code. Then we got the span class. The span class all that we should have. That's weird. Maybe text is greater than that. Ah. Let's see. That's a strong possibility, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because that is a long line. Yeah. That could be the problem. Gosh, really? 256? Oh, text, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, text only needs to contain that, and then... You know, it's got to contain all of this. Doesn't it? Because the... Yeah, this bankless author is part of it. Can I just... Can I scroll right? Can I do that? Yeah. Uh, we're saying it goes up to here, I believe, because then the the other thing then closes the div. I think. I imagine. I imagine. But it, it'd be something like that. Yeah. Right. 358 cars. Interesting. Good call, as far as. Can you simdy simdy? Uh, pff, blimey. If you ever registered that wide, I would, 
One is record Yo Mama in honor the classic joke. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. So it's way down here, wasn't it? Support both. Yeah, right. Well, this guy still doesn't like this. Unless maybe there's another line that's just really long again. Yeah, that's exactly why I don't. Something. That's what they do with padding. And that was where it was again, wasn't it? Did I actually load it? Padding was string, wasn't it? Well, actually, let's um, have a look at the outboard of this guy. So it does seem to be doing the same thing again. All right, that's exactly what the other thing was looking like. Yeah, they're identical. Hmm, another separate bug, yeah. It does look to me as if it's null termination as well. The only place that I've actually used all this author stuff is here. I've sprint out into there. And then it's sitting on a null pointer. Oh, this smells a bit awful. That's just what they did with padding. Because basically. We should get progress made, time code, for the third time. And then we should get the the text coming in again as span class author style. Progress made. So it's all this stuff. Claim memory. Text location. Copies into buffer. Oh, hang on a minute. Maybe working isn't isn't big enough. Could that be possible? Text is five twelve. Where's working? Working is that big. That could be it. Gosh. Getting some big, um, some big files here. Oh yeah, 42 is the big one, isn't it, as well? It's like the 8-hour vid. Yeah, 9. There we go. Gosh. Good old, um, good old nothings, just stretching this to the, to the absolute limits. That's what they did with padding. Gingerbill, and then, yeah, resuming with the copy. Blimey, so that was all for one, just for one annotation. It needed two kilobytes, was it? I suppose I will actually just write that out, write it out as um, as 2k. God damn it! So what has that given me, size-wise? 171k. <laughs> Climb it. I mean, this Coral X seems to like posting long thing widgets. Actually, I'll tell you what, it could be, could actually be worthwhile looking up um, exactly how much that took. Could it? Could, would that be worth doing? I, mean, I suppose I could print F for each one, the size, couldn't I? So that was on. I will just have a look at that. 
just very quickly. So progress main. Yeah, I mean this is some. Uh, let's create the pizza. Then. Enjoy. It's some. Uh, I don't know really, like high def stuff, isn't it? 2K, 2K annotations. Have I still got that, I wonder? It's not a thing. So, what is this going to give me? It's in bytes, isn't it? Well, let's just show it in bytes. Why not? Why the hell not? So we've got one that's one and a half K. I suppose I could technically sort these, but that's a bit overkill, I think. Yeah, one and a half K. Yeah, I mean, I might want to um, maybe give it 4K. I can't see, I can't see these guys getting any bigger than this, I don't think. Um, well, I mean, 4K should give us enough, I think. How much have we got in total? So we're using out. So we've got 512 for the out. We've got an entire megabyte to do to work with. 512k for the for the final file. And we're kind of nowhere near that. So right, yeah. And then this 4K thing for the working. So there, it wasn't a null termination in the end at all. Five twelve for the text. I suppose I could look at how big that needed to be as well. Um, where do I flush the text? In point, we're still writing to the text here. So at this point, text is there. So yeah, this is where we use the text. So if we just print F. So we need 358 for that. 418. Yeah, wow. So I think I just... I think I said it's a 512, didn't I? So just by pure luck that that actually was enough. Hmm. Maybe I want to allocate a K for that even, maybe. Because 418, I mean... 418, that's pretty close to 512. Let's make it OK. Good job that I allocated a megabyte for all this lot. That's all I can say. I think that's all right for now. So we've got those guys nicely styled. Now I suppose the question is, um, should I just should I style the in text people as well, like all of these guys here? In fact, this is a really good test for the color. 
because there's a bunch of people in this one annotation. Yeah, let's let's do that. So really, what we're saying here is if the marker, isn't it? So it's going to be similar to the blackboard one. Um, actually, similar to the it's similar to the references in terms of using the offset. text pointer oh right yeah of course so yeah in fact here this is going to be blowing up the text usage a lot as well so for each ref index so if there's a reference count then we do for each reference index. Ah, hang on a minute. This could get a bit messy, I think. Because we could end up with these guys kind of competing. You know, it's like, if there's a reference count, or there's, or there's a number of markers, if, the, if there's a reference count, or if there's a marker count. Uh, do I want to solve this problem? This might be doable, actually. This might not be too bad. Well, I got a minute. That's data ref. So if there's a data ref, then we want to do that. I mean, what I'm kind of thinking of doing is saying, if there's a reference count, or there's a mem there's a, an author count, or sorry, a, um, a marker count, oh, hang on a minute, that isn't right either, is it? Because the marker count could be stuff that's unrelated to the, to the uh, authors. You know what I'm talking about is it needs to be HMML underscore member or whatever it is. Yeah. And also, oh god, I will need to deal with the projects at some point as well. So yeah, well, that'll be interesting to deal with actually. I don't know how I'm going to do that exactly because that is going to require us to be able to click on something. But currently we're only clicking on this kind of stuff. 
tell you what, just um, just while I've, I've got that in my mind, let me just see what happens here. Alright, let's uh, recap some stuff of the episode. Let's just make this a reference. Actually, let's use OBBG because it's uh, it's OBBG, isn't it? Obviously. Let's just see what happens when I click on this. Oh, okay. So you can do that. Obviously, you want like target blank as well. It's target blank, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting. So he's coming along like that. Well, oh, I don't mind you. So like if I'm on here and I click on that. Yeah, it's gone up to the so this will need some kind of fancy footwork, I think. I can't just use that in there. I think I will need to do like a, a hoverable pop-up box as I was kind of thinking. But I'm not exactly sure how to deal with that just at the moment. Um, yeah, okay, so the... people so reference count uh, god coconut where am I oh I'm in the wrong file <laughs> uh, HTML to HTML yeah right, right got you If there's a mark account, I suppose I actually could count up here uh, the, the members. Couldn't I? And then when I get down here. Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, I will. I would need to count them at once, so I think. Let's just see what HM Live gives me again. Let's see. So, mark accounts. What other accounts do we have? Reference count. Yeah, so there's the mark accounts. Annotation counts. Yeah, right. So, yeah, if I want to find out, uh, oh, I don't know, what are the, got the category, so we're using the category, we want to use the member, and I suppose we will want to use the project as well, won't we? So we do want to use all of these markers. Which kind of suggests that I might as well deal with them all up here. Uh, and I could do that, couldn't I? I could totally do that. Couldn't I? Oh, hang on a minute. No, because the whole, the whole thing was... Um, <laughs> I need to like build up the uh, the text, don't I? <laughs> God damn it! Hmm. 
<clears throat> Let's have a look at the HTML file. So, oh, mind you, no, I've passed it in, haven't I? I don't want to be looking at that. Um, I want to be looking at this, don't I? Yeah, I do want to be looking at, at the um, HTML. So basically, let's give myself a, a small test thing. So we're talking about authors and references, aren't we? Okay, so let's say that insofar as says something, he says some text, some text referring to Zilaresco. about this thing he saw in the news some yeah, site page Should we give it one of those as well? Or is that too much to ask? What we're we looking at here, we're looking at um called next. Right, so if I do that on that. So I've obviously got a bug somewhere, haven't I? That was if there was an author. Sometimes we've to Zilla Rescue about this thing. Site page URL. You saw in the news. Run C tags on hmlib.h, then control X, control O might work after hmlib struct to show what stuff it has. C tags. How do I do that? It's found on most unit systems. Oh, hang on, don't have it installed. Ah, I've got CTAG installed apparently. Oh, do I just need to say like this? Just a tag that they would pick up. Spell for use with Emacs. Syntax. Is the Vim here? I guess that would be okay. So E. C tags E. Tags. Okay. 
Gonna be a bit of a tangential of that all. <laughs> control X, Control O. After HM Lib struct. It tags from Jim's working directory to see it. What's happening there? Oh wow, that isn't uh, hang on a minute. Isn't control X control O more of more of an Emacs sort of thing? Like after that, I have a struct I type. Oh yeah, I suppose I need to be in insert mode, don't I? So hang on a second, I just need to just revert that all this stuff. Uh, yeah. If <laughs> right, I think it was, I think it was there. Should have saved them as I was going actually as well. Okay, so I think we're back where we were. So if you're in insert mode, uh, oh, this is the other file. Oh, I've struck that type. Maybe it hasn't picked up the tags, maybe. Uh, let's see those again. Exuberant tags. Also needs that. Felt out plugging on. Sensibly complete. Omnifunk oh, equals syntax. Uh, syntax complete. Complete. I'm pretty sure um, felt out plugging is on as well. <laughs> HTML2 annotations. I can never ignore you insofar as. There you go. Uh, well, it's done something, isn't it? it? Don't think that's what I'm after, though, is it? Because <laughs> this should show stuff like the. Uh, well, for example, the marker.counts. Yeah. Hmm, that's a shame. Maybe it's just not finding the uh, tax file, maybe. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna have to take a, a very short break. Uh, oh gosh, the music's always over as well. Hmm. Yeah. Well, how, how long are we going? It's just an hour and a half. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a short break. Um, I'll be back in a minute. I mean, we might we might close it early, or uh, we might kind of pursue all this stuff. Um, we'll uh, we will see. Uh, I'll just give you the uh, lovely audio player to watch.
Sure, but it up early. Last question try. Set tags. Question mark. Should have the path to the file you generated in it for it to work. So set tags thinks it's the current directory. And tags. I believe. So yeah. Present working directory is this. Hmm. And it was uh it was called tags, wasn't it? Yeah, the file was called tags. So yeah, I don't know. <coughs> But what I was kind of thinking just then was that essentially all I'm talking about here is building up this text buffer, right? Looping over all of the markers here, so um, sorry, it's it's here. Isn't it? There's a mark account. If there's a mark account, um. Can do authored, yeah. So, right, so yeah, we can do authored. Because that happens, that definitely happens first. And that is part of the text. And then what I'm basically saying is, if there's a mark account, or if there's a reference count, then we go into this loop, and we say, while the the in so we set the uh, we set the in point to be at the start of the text, and we say while that take away the text is less than the references offset, the first references offset, and the first markers offset. Write out the contents of the text into the in pointer so essentially do sorry write out the contents of the of the um, the text which is pointed to by the in pointer write that out into the text dot pointer and then for each offset We want to see what it is. We would say if it is a category, for example, or if it if the type is if the type is a member, then we do something with it. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. What's the references? So I suppose, <laughs> yeah, I suppose then. Oh no, it's not quite just that, is it? It's more like, 
So when we get there, so when we've hit the point where in point to take away text is equal to one of these markers or a reference, we then want to say, Um, if the in point to take away the uh, the text is equal to the offset of a reference then do this if it's equal to the reference of a marker then we want to see then we want to say if it's um, if that type of marker is a a member then do this I think that seems like a reasonable way to go about doing this but it feels like quite a big change to me uh, which is which could be kind of error prone um So I think what I will do is I will I think I will call it here, and I think I will try and stream t tomorrow actually. Uh, I mean I usually take the weekend off. Version control, yeah. I do actually push it to the gate, don't I? What's the difference today? Character hash, the uh, string hashing. Increase buffer size. Claim buffer. Colored next. Yeah, maybe I don't need to push out.html today. Oh yeah, so the, there's a, just one thing I did off stream, which was just kind of re relining this stuff. It's the same content, um, but I just kind of moved the stuff down just so it's a bit more readable. And I also, um, I also lined it up like an absolute moron, <laughs> basically. Uh, and then we set these guys. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll push this stuff now. And then I'll keep I'll keep mulling over this stuff because I hadn't really I hadn't really anticipated the um, I hadn't really anticipated. The, to the issue basically you know because we've got multiple things in play the reference and the member and we could also have a category and also a project, <laughs> so there could be there could be all sorts going on, <laughs> uh, which I kind of totally hadn't bargained on. Uh, Saturday stream. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, let's add this stuff. HTML to HTML. Style.css. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to add the out.html. So let's go to the news, let's see. Um, some text referring to Zilla Risco about this thing he saw in the, in the news. He saw it in the news. That's a point, actually. Hang on, this is a... Well, I mean, maybe this bug will be fixed. Um, when I do the actual... The new stuff. The thing he saw in the news, he saw it in the news. Tch. 
Um, let's just have a quick look for that, actually. Copy into buffer. Endpoint to text. Text pointer there. Copy that into the text. We're basically talking about copying this this bit out, aren't we? So we were building up the text node. Yeah, I suppose again it's it's this situation of building up the text node, isn't it? Or rather bu building the stuff into the text buffer. And that's the entire that's all the stuff that I will be working on. Uh next time. So maybe it isn't really worth me looking into this necessarily. It's interesting that, that I don't think that was being triggered earlier then, was it? Maybe it was happening and I just didn't spot it. Because the only thing I've done today is um, it's just this, isn't it? This is the only. This is the only new code, isn't it? Yeah, that was the only only bit of new code. Gosh. Mind you, I suppose an hour and a half is quite a short stream for me. So let's just, I'm just going to try if zeroing this bit out. Does still build. Yeah, right. Sometimes we're just going to ask about this thing, he's showing the news, he's showing the news. Let's pop Limbo on and just see if we can sort this out. So I think that's a latent bug. That'd be nice to squash that before we go. So we're talking about building up the text buffer. So where's the uh, where's the text? There's the text. Claim buffer. Ten twenty four. Oh, mind you, we had to change the we changed the buffer sizes as well, didn't we? I don't think could that have. Affected that though, I wonder. The incremental is zero. So if there's a, an author, we do that. If there's a mark account, we don't touch the text buffer. We set that to be the text. So the text buffer at this point only contains this bit of information here. Because right, so we claim the text here. It contains the span at the start, which is for for the author. And well, the next time we use this text, text pointer is here. So for each reference, for each reference in this annotation, we're going to write out the text. And we're going to write out this, the stuff that's in this text thing here. Um, into the text pointer. So that means it puts it after the span. If 
the annotation index offset is less than or greater than less than or equal to two, then we do this, but it isn't, so it's, we're not going to enter this loop or um bits a bit of code. If it's less than or equal to two, and the text pointer minus one is equal to that, then we go is equal to a space. Then we go to decrement the text pointer. I think we're going to uh, hit that. The increment is going to be the size of the sprintf of super this because it's a reference. So we've written out, up to this point, we've written out the text on, up to the offset. And then we want to write out this into the text buffer. And we want to increment the text pointer. So yeah, we're actually we're writing it to the text pointer, right, which is inside the text buffer. Text buffer is that, and then we're going to increment the data ref, which is part of the other system. And after having done that, we're going to copy this string. In pointer into the text. Copy string to buffer. In pointer to text. So in pointer is still in the text, isn't it? Where is in pointer at this point? So, in pointer is just before the offset, isn't it? Oh, well, it's at the offset. Because, like, this is the, um, it's the offset. It's, go it's re going up to the offset. Or, while it's less than the offset. Well, the in pointer, to take away the text, is less than the offset. We're going to increment the stuff. And it's going to increment so it is actually at the offset. We're we just copying out copying it out too many times. Is that all that's happening? Why didn't I see that earlier though? Some text referring to Instalator about this thing he saw in the news. Let's just um, drill down, well actually let's, give some, let's use OBBG42 because there's quite a lot in that. Yeah then that isn't happy. So, okay. Rather than doing this, ah, oh, hang on a bit. That could this could be correct, couldn't it? Because if there's still stuff, because this is a for loop, isn't it? Yeah, if there's still stuff, it will then increment. It will then keep going. Otherwise, if, if there's no more offsets to loop, if there's no more references to loop through, it'll hop out. It 
it won't finish writing the it won't finish writing the text into there. Hmm. I feel like this will be incorrect. Some types of references are also what I think is on the news. So that does kind of look okay to me. I was wondering if I needed to do this before. If I was wondering, I need to do that there. You know, it just seems a bit weird that I'm doing this straight after a new line. Let's just see what this actually does do. So that still looks the same, somehow. How does that look the same? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Just but full banana hits, I think. Out pointer. Oh, hang on. Right, right. So it doesn't matter because out pointer is a different thing entirely. We're still building up the text here, so it doesn't matter. Because they're unrelated. So maybe that's fine to do that. Gosh, this is very weird though. I think I fixed the bug, but it's just so weird. Like, I've got all this stuff, like, flying around. I just wonder if there's a nicer way of actually dealing with it all. There probably is, and I just haven't... I just haven't seen it yet. Stream heart. Did I actually write a heart in the annotations? I should have seen that another time as well. Yeah, I did write a heart. How did I do that? I don't remember doing that, but I must have done. Yeah, so it was just this, wasn't it? It's was just a just an extra copy string to buffer. That I just didn't need. And I think I understand why I can get away with getting rid of it. Oh actually, hang on a second. No, let me just say something here. I think it's risky 14 has got two references in the same annotation. Yeah, okay. So that's that's still it all right. Okay. So yeah, maybe we we're, maybe we're okay now. Maybe we're okay. So let's uh, check the diff again. Got a nice int just sitting there. Apparently that is unchanged. And this int down here is new. So yeah. 
So we've got the coloured, coloured people. Or, well, it's just coloured author, isn't it? <laughs> just haven't really coloured everyone in yet. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, do this. Just double check it's just the two files. Start to see this. And also, look how risky is just the same as it was before, <laughs> because there's no there's no authors in this in this episode. So my code from today just has no effect on it at all. And the um, HTML output is exactly the same, which is kind of kind of nice to see, I suppose. HTML to HTML. Let's see. And style. Let's see. So colored authors. So I suppose that would come under. System. Just bushes, that's how my dev still. Uh, <clears throat> categories of. Category tagging, yeah. I mean, it, I think it will come under category tagging. Tagging this stuff. Yeah. Nick Q. I'll buy a colon. Yeah. Regarding the Nick prefix, perhaps we could use that to generate a link, which takes us directly to the page of the member who asked the Q. If they have an account in the Hamid network. Yeah, that's true. We haven't technically done that, have we? It's just a style. And there's nobody in here, so <laughs> yeah. Let's just push it as three. That'll do. Colored authors. And uh, push it. So yeah, there we go. I think that was a reasonably successful stream. Oh. Oh wow, I think I've just knackered the little cushion on the chair. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, again, unfortunately, we can't actually see it. Um, so let's just <laughs> let's just get uh, OBG42 back on the thing. So yeah, there we can see some nice coloured people. I wonder if I can get a nice screenshot of like insofar as and Zoresco both in the picture. Ginger Bill, he's still there. There's the Larisco, he's the Larisco again. There's it so far as. Uh, oh wow, it's right at the end. Hmm. We need to get you guys together more often. Why is it, is there sap in here at all, I wonder? I wanted to pack one data for some time, but I don't know How are you supposed to approach achieving this? Oh, wow. So there's all sorts in this one. It's got the uh, reference as well. Yeah, right. Let's use this one. Let's 
uh, print screen on that. And let's also just give it a bit more, a bit more progress through the question. Oh, unfortunately, look at how um, how tough that is to read. Let's let's not do that because <laughs> that will uh, expose some bogusness. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's also hover. Yeah, I think that that screenshot should be fine. RP caution, yeah, absolutely. Reason successful, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, did I push that? I think I did, didn't I? Hard to tell with all that, all that red. What if I doubt? Oh yeah, because that's uh, now it would be BG. All right, so yeah, that is all for now. Um, thank you, folks, for being here and uh, for being awesome and for being heroic and. Uh, yeah, it has been generally fantastic. Ah, oh, cool, so Zilla Resco is also a man now, dog. What was that for? I mean, not the not the uh, aren't always um, the man now, dog. Was there something that happened today? Maybe it's from a different occasion. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's the man I don't have participated in the community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. So, yeah, cheers very much, folks. Um, and, yeah, with a bit of luck, I might stream tomorrow uh, for a bonus Saturday stream. Uh, but until then, farewell for now. <laughs>